Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I get to speak to one of our favorite people in the world, Manny Pacheco. Hey, guys. Manny, great to see you again. I was talking to, uh, I think, my grandson about cartoons. Mm. Uh, he likes to draw, and we were talking about cartoons. I ha and, and the reason I brought it up is because I have not seen any of those classic Merry Melody cartoons in decades. Where are they? Once upon a time, you would see them, you know, on a rare occasion. And now, is somebody hiding them in a vault? I don't know. <laughs> well, their history is from the fact that you could go to the movies, pay two bits, see one of those Merry Melodies or Looney Tunes, and then see a, a, a two-reeler a short or maybe a, a newsreel, and then you'd watch two films. And th yes. those days are long, long gone. So when those days went away, obviously the idea of watching that kind of a cartoon went away as well. But that said, uh, TCM just recently celebrated their 100th anniversary of Warner Brothers. They are the uh, Warner Brothers, the parent company of Turner Classic Movies. And all through the month, in between movies, if you were lucky, you could catch one of those great Merry Melodies or Looney Tunes. I saw oh, a bunch of them throughout the month. You missed I it. Missed, I yeah. missed that. I missed that. I'm sorry yeah. to say. That's too bad. Yeah, and, and they're, they're so fun. They're so inappropriate in so many ways, especially, <laughs> the, especially Wile E. Coyote and, 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 and the Roadrunner. Beep, yeah. beep. <laughs> but of course, Pepe Le Pew was a little bit, um, a little bit too manhandly for me. Uh, but but I mean, so many great great um, characters came out of those. Uh, of course, Sylvester and Tweety, Daffy Duck, Elmer uh, Fudd. Fudd, Porky Pig. Yeah. Uh, of course, I just mentioned uh, Pepe Le Pew, the Coyote, and and the Roadrunner. But of course, the 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 bedrock, the anchor, shall we say, which would probably be more appropriate, uh, Bugs Bunny, of course. Yeah. And um, but Warner Brothers was very innovative. Bill M Bill Melendres, who was went on to do the Peanut series, of course, was uh, one of the animators of of the uh, whole Warner Brothers team. Chuck Jones would direct these, and Chuck Jones was legendary in the direction of animation. And um, really, a great, loud, rude counterpart to what Disney was trying to show. Yes. Mm. Yes. You know, we, we were talking not too long ago about, um, um, oh man, I just had a senior moment, forgive me. <laughs> Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at any rate, what I wanted to say was that these classic cartoons I saw for the first time on television as a kid, sure. because that's the, the they were old, too old for the movies, and we they'd play on television. They were they were staples. They were wonderful, and we I could watch them over and over and over again. One of the things that Warner Brothers would do on these Merry Melodies and or Looney Tunes is that they would also like to uh, animate a major actor. So you might see a couple of these episodes where you would see a Charles Boyer or sure. Pete Laurie or Humphrey Bogart or Marlene sure. Dietrich in animation form, and of course with somebody imitating them as well. Yeah. And it was like it was like going to the Hollywood canteen and seeing all these actors, but in animation. And I, they were they were so relevant. Disney, I remember. Yes. Disney they, was quaint. I mean, they, they, they there's no year you can attach to Disney product. Yeah. But but you can attach the 1940s and the 1950s to these Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. They were that relevant, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one of them specifically. Uh, you're right. All these animated uh, famous characters, uh, famous animated versions of famous real live actors, yeah. Clark Gable, for instance, right. were walking into the Brown Derby. Yes, that's right. You know? Now, the Brown Derby closed down in, I don't know, 1958 or something like that. And the, whatever Brown Derby was left by the time I got to Hollywood didn't look like a Brown Derby. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember them distinctly, and they were wonderful animation. They were very funny. A lot of them were really made for adults, not for children, even well, though they were quote yeah. yeah, cartoons. Yeah. Right, right. Well, well, I remember. I remember Hanna Barbera. What wasn't that? Uh, Snacklepuss uh, and uh, Yogi and uh, Boo Boo. Sure. Uh, and I, I remember all the. And I seem to remember that 
Saturday mornings on TV is where I saw them. And it, you would have like a half hour of Tom and Jerry talk about inappropriate well, violence. Tom and Jerry were, yeah. M, were MGM. And yeah. of course, Hanna Barbera, best known for the Flintstones and 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 the Jetsons. But Saturday, you're right. Saturday mornings, where mm. you might see a package of Merry Melodies, uh, then you might go into some of the Fleischer uh, animation, where you might see um, the, the 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 Fleischer comedies, Pop Popeye or or yep. uh, Out of or the Inkwell, Be Betty Boop or that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And then they would do like some MGM comedies, maybe, and they, that's when you end up with the Tom and Jerry. And then they would probably close off with some Hanna Barbera. Where yeah. you you know you'd see a Roger Ramjet or um, you might see like you said Yogi Bear or Huckleberry Hound or any of the great you know those great classics, but mm -hmm. I think I truly think that the Warner Brothers comedies were the most outlandish. Mm -hmm. If I had to make a comparison, the Merry Melodies and the Warner Brothers were more along the lines of what the Three Stooges were doing, as opposed to what Hanna Barbera was more Abbott and Costello. Mm -hmm. uh, Disney was probably more quaint, like Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. And um, the Fleischer brothers had an old quality like the Marx brothers. I mean, each one had their own personality. Yes, they did. Clearly, the most explosive and the most physical comedy was coming out of Warner Brothers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it was a certain era. Um, you tell me what era it was. But after World War II... Um, you know, you mentioned Yogi Berra, things like that. That's really what the '60s. Yeah, that's a that was a whole new era of animation for television. Right, but Tom and Jerry, but, but Tom and Jerry came out at the same time. I mean, but yeah. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm really talking about that that classic yeah. Looney Tunes and and um, you know Merry Melodies. Right, and and the other and the other competitor, I we, I dare we, we we should not ignore is Walter Lance with his uh, uh, Woody Woodpecker. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there was enough competition to go around. Warner Brothers had theirs with, with the right. Merry Melodies and the Looney Tunes. MGM had Tom and Jerry. Paramount had Walter Lance and the Huckleberry Hound. Or maybe yeah. that, you know, that might not have been Paramount. That actually might have been Goldwyn Studios. But either way, they were a competitor. And, sure. and then came later the 60s that were designed for television. Yeah. And those, you know, the Flintstones were designed for television. Right. The Jetsons exactly. Were designed yeah, very, for, sure. Yeah. You know, Johnny Quest designed for television. No, yeah. no. You're talking about these movie versions. But I will say they all came together in that one movie that is so special and so fun to watch from the 1980s. And that's Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Right. You get oh, all yeah. of these great uh, competitors yes. actually now working in collaborative uh, form. Yes. Yeah. To make, I think, truly a a magical experience of animation in the 1980s, where Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny could work side by side. Right. I want to know the person who was able to get all of the rights for all of these. That had to be an expensive film to make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there you well, go. But let's face it, Manny, Jessica Rabbit got top dollar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't. She wasn't really bad. She was just drawn bad. Yes, and while you and I are are are, are drooling over Jessica Rabbit, Art's like, well, what happened? We didn't talk about Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> you know, I'm, what I'm trying to do is be polite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, right, I, I, what about all the anime stuff? Oh, wow, well, that's you? a different thing. Oh, right? that's a different that's a different story. But, and Art. We'll leave that for the next discussion when we talk about Pixar. So I have one last, one last question for you, Monty. So yeah. uh, where would we, if we wanted to go find a bunch of things, are they like on a Hulu or a Pluto or uh, are they uh, YouTube? Where would you find these things? They would play on YouTube. I mean, obviously yeah. they're available on YouTube. I, I, yeah. I'd be surprised if they're not. Um, they, they may, you may have to pay for them. I'm not sure. Right. But it seems to me YouTube would be the way to go. Whatever, w however Warner Brothers streams, and I think right now they they partner with HBO, so maybe you can find them on HBO. I mean that makes the most sense, and that's their partner stream. You know, like like Paramount is a partner stream with a certain yeah. company, and and uh, all the other part Disney and Hulu are partnered with with ESPN and ABC. I, th I think that Warner Brothers partners with HBO. So I think if you're going to find any of that uh, Warner animation, it would be there. But I might be wrong. Mm. Well, be, you know, Manny, uh, over the years, the studios have been sold off in bits and pieces combined yeah. with other people. Right. I know that the, the latest iteration 
was that uh, AT and T had owned Warner Brothers, right. spun it off into its separate stock. WBD Warner Brothers Warner Brothers Discovery. Anything. Yeah, but that's yeah. what Warner Brothers Discovery that owns like uh, don't they own TCM? Yeah, WBD and that and and CNN and this wild mishmash. Uh, well. CNN is a Turner thing. CNN was always mashed together with 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 Turner Classic Movies. That yeah. that right. I, in fact when I went I went to visit a friend of mine who's a cinematographer uh, for for CNN. She now is based out of the Middle East, but when she was based in Georgia, she actually gave me a tour of the uh, of the uh, of CNN and Turner Turner Classic Movies. They're all like in the same, same neighborhood building. buildings yeah. together. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's an old uh, collaborative yeah. uh, uh, collaboration. Yeah. All right. yeah. Plenty to talk about in the future, but for now, that 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 that, that that's all, folks. <laughs> Silly wabbit. <laughs> for more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.